Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for the first of several videos that I have planned for the newly released Train Sim World 3. Uh, Train Sim World 3 officially launched on Steam, Epic Games Xbox, Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation on the 6th of September, and I think it's a good generational leap over the previous iteration of the Train Sim World franchise. In this episode, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently to usual, as I really wanted to show off the new training centre area for budding drivers who might be new to the franchise, or new to train simulation more generally. Uh, we're going to take a little walk around the training centre area and complete a few training tasks to demonstrate how it all works. But before that, I wanted to clear up some confusion and address some of the questions I've seen online about Train Sim World 3, as well as mentioning a few of the new features. Firstly, you don't need to buy your Train Sim World and Train Sim World 2 DLC again, as it will be available within Train Sim World 3. Uh, not all of the features from Train Sim World 3 will be automatically applied to the new routes, but hopefully these features will be implemented on the older routes in a later update, with around 53 add ons now available in the Train Sim World franchise. Uh, personally, I'm looking forward to seeing what new routes and trains will come to Train Sim World in the future, uh, as well as seeing updates on some of the older, DS, uh, sorry, older DLC uh, to Train Sim World 3 standards. Secondly, trains and locomotives are no longer locked to a particular route, um, and this allows for much more freedom in where you can drive a particular train. Uh, for me personally, I'm all about realism, so I'd only use trains on routes that they would be used on in real life, but if you fancy driving a long American freight train on the southeastern high speed route, uh, then I believe that this is now possible. In terms of new features, the biggest feature is probably the new dynamic weather system and volumetric skies. When choosing a journey in timetable mode, you can now choose to have fixed weather or dynamic weather, where the weather changes during the journey, and this feature is applied to all of your older routes, as well as the new Train Sim World 3 routes. Um, so you can go from clear skies to rain and back again, all in one journey, or if you're driving in winter, then you might perhaps go from clear skies to snow instead. There's also now a thunderstorm effect with lightning, uh, which adds to the uh, weather pattern, so you've got uh, more um, choices of different varieties of weather than you had before. You'll also notice that passengers now use their umbrellas when the weather starts to rain, which I think is a nice touch. Um, to go with this, there are also some new effects, such as rain now splashing off the ground as it falls. The dynamic weather system will work on all of your old Train Sim World and Train Sim World 2 routes, as well as the newer routes. Another key feature is a completely overhauled lighting system, uh, which, as far as I'm aware, currently only features on the three routes included with Train Sim World 3, and I have to say it's quite impressive, as you're going to see in some of my future videos. Um, the lighting looks far better than it did in Train Sim World 2, especially at dawn and dusk, and you'll also notice when coming out of tunnels how the lighting is very bright until your eyes adjust the lighting a second or two after exiting the tunnel. Trains now also feature kick-up effects, which are especially noticeable in the snow, as the train and wheels kick up snow off the track, forming a mist of snow alongside the train. Electrical sparks and arcing from the overhead catenary or the third rail um, are now also visible, and this changes depending on the weather, so in wet or snowy weather, you're going to see a drastic increase in the number of sparks over dry and clear weather. I plan to highlight all of the above features in several planned videos for the routes in Train Sim World 3 in the near future, uh, with at least one video planned for each route that comes with the package. In terms of routes, I'm hoping to cover the newly extended Southeastern High Speed route first, between St Pancras and Ashford in a Class 395. The Southeastern High Speed route, which comes with Train Sim World 3, extends the original St Pancras to Faversham route uh, between Ebbsfleet International and Ashford International, and also the conventional lines between Grey. End and Dartsford. I plan to cover the Dartsford extension in a follow-up video in a class 465. Following on from this, I'm hoping to make a video on the new German high-speed route between Kassel and Würzburg in an ICE-1, and at 116 miles this is by far the longest route in Train Sim World so far. This route also features another feature, uh, which is how the wind effects can affect how you drive the train and alter the physics. Then, after this, I'm hoping to make my first American video in a few years on the new K. John Pass route, um, a route which is available in Train Simulator Classic that I haven't covered before. I'm planning to cover a full freight run along this route, utilising the ES44C4 locomotive. 
Uh, so for the next few weeks, the focus of this channel will be on Train Sim World rather than Train Simulator Classic, though I do have plenty more Train Simulator Classic videos in the pipeline. Now let's take a look at the focus for this video, which is the new training center. The training center in Train Sim World 3 harkens back to the test track back in Train Simulator Classic. It features um, some central buildings, a large train depot, lots of sidings, a smaller circular test track, and then a much larger circular test track running around it all, set somewhere in the mountains of Europe. Um, there's two ways to utilize the training center in Train Sim World 3. The first is to explore the area on foot and walk up to the different highlighted points to choose particular lessons. The second is to choose a specific lesson you want to cover directly from the game menu. For this video, I thought it would be great to walk around and choose a couple of training modules to complete uh, to demonstrate how it all works, but don't worry, I won't be covering all of the modules that are available here. We're now standing in front of the training centre and I've uh, entered first person mode here so that we can just walk around if we want to. And um, you've got complete freedom to explore the entire area on foot. Uh, so you could walk all the way out to the outer test track if you wanted. You could even walk all the way around the outer test track. Though I suggest that would probably take uh, rather a long time and I'm certainly not going to do that in this video. Um, everything up to this point was scripted but uh, the scripting has ended now. So I'm just sort of free talking and trying to, well I guess, making it up as I go along. Um, so, um, of course, we can, as I said, we can walk around the whole area and you can look around here and you can just wander around the trains if you want to. Uh, there's a very large depot just here with the red doors, so that's where the trains are all stabled. And um, you can enter any of these trains and drive them around this area. And I think you can also potentially enter some lessons if you enter one of the trains. Um, so you've got complete freedom here to do pretty much what you want, though I'm interested in just covering a couple of training modules. Uh, you'll notice I'm walking quite fast. I've just got the, it set to run by default rather than walking as you certainly don't get anywhere. If I press shift now we're back to walking and we're not getting anywhere very fast. Um, so you can see all these different trains parked up. I do find it odd to see American, uh, German and British trains all parked up together. And of course we've got third rail tracks and we've got overhead tracks. Um, and I think the outer track is overhead and third rail, if I remember rightly. I think that pretty much the whole area is, in fact. Um, so what I've decided to do is just do a couple of training modules in the BR-185. So uh, to do that, I'm going to walk up to one of these markers you can see here. I believe this is the one. Uh, it's not really very intuitive, as we're not next to a BR-185 at all. We've got the Class 66 there, the ES-44 over there, another Class 66, a Class 465, an SD-40, I think that is right over there and then the class 395 so I can't really see the class 185 anywhere um, so what I'm going to do in a moment I'm going to press E to start the uh, introduction to the BR 185 I'll complete that module and I think I'll do one more follow-on module after that I'm not going to do a huge amount of talking uh, because I really want to focus on what the instructor is saying to me and I'll only say something where I feel that I need to um, so without further ado, I'm going to press E now and jump into the lesson. Oh, one other thing to say actually, just before I do, um, so correction to that, um, is I am going to be using the HUD for this lesson because I find uh, when trying to learn about different trains, it's actually useful to have the HUD turned on. Uh, so I will be driving with the HUD in probably the only video on this channel where you're ever going to see the HUD. And so yeah, now without further ado, let's start the lesson. In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of a BR-185.2 electric locomotive. During this brief introduction, you will cover the critical driving controls and freight operations. When you are ready, climb aboard to get started. So now I just need to walk towards the loco, click on the door to open it, and then find the right step to click on so that I can climb. I was struggling with this earlier. Uh, there we are, and then just press E to climb up. Take a seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your... For this introduction, you will be driving the locomotive a short distance and coupling to a short freight train. Firstly, you will need to set the reverser. This controls the direction of travel and activates the cab. Now it wants me to put the reverser into the forward position. Set the headlights to let others around you know this train is operational. Uh, 
and now to set the signal lights to headlights, which is something I forgot to do in my last Train Sim World uh, video uh, in Germany, which was in the BR146. You actually have to go to the rear of the cab and change this switch here uh, to change it from tail lights to headlights. There are three types of brakes that are used on this locomotive. The direct brake, train brake and electric brake. The direct brake applies air brakes on just the locomotive and not the wagons. This is used usually within yards for shunting operations. Until you get more familiar with the locomotive, you can ignore this control. The train brake applies air brakes on the locomotive and the wagons together. Under most circumstances, you will slow the train using this control. The electric brake uses traction motors to slow the train down without using the air brakes. You can use this to provide additional braking, such as when you need to manage your speed going down a steep gradient. The locomotive is now ready to go. Release the train brake and use the throttle to apply some power to get moving. And just to say at this point, of course, we are running light loco, so you don't need a lot of throttle. Uh, the train will accelerate a bit like a rocket. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of braking force using the train brake. This train is part of the Bombardier Tracks family, a modular platform of diesel and electric locomotives that come in both passenger and freight variations. More than 1800 locomotives of this family have been sold throughout Europe and are now in use in 17 different countries. The BR185.2, part of the Trex 2 family, is known for the noticeable scale it plays when accelerating from 0 to 16 km per hour. This locomotive can produce 5,600 kilowatts, that's 7,500 horsepower, and has a maximum operational speed of 140 kilometers per hour. We're now just going to coast through this yard to the stopping location, about 500 meters away and then we're going to need to stop and do a, change some points, then do a reversal uh, to connect to the freight wagons that you can see just to our right here. Well, as earlier I said that we're in the mountains of Europe, but to be quite honest, although it looks kind of European, this is a very nondescript location, we could be uh, pretty much anywhere in the world, but I'm just going to guess Europe. Um, I'm just thinking of, I don't know, the Velim test track or something, although it's not mountainous, uh, that's in the Czech Republic, um, that's certainly a well-known test track within Europe. The freight wagons are behind you. Change direction with the reverser, then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. So I'm just going to change direction with the reverser here, 
and I'm going to open the map to change the points. So you can see our train just here, and then these uh, two, there's two sets of points behind us that we need to change. So if I just right click to drag the map a bit, um, in fact it looks like the first set of points might be set correctly, but if I change that switch, yeah, we're now set. Uh, the junction proceed. is correctly aligned, and you can now couple up to the freight. Come to a stop once your locomotive gently touches the wagons. As you reverse, you may find it helpful to use the external camera view to help see behind you. I decided to switch to the external camera view for this reversal. I guess in real life you'd either look out the window or jump to the rear cab and set that up. Um, I don't want to go too fast here, so I'm not going to be going up to that 32 kilometers per hour. Maybe around 15 should, should about suffice. 15 to 20. You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Let's connect the formation using the external camera. Now couple the locomotive to the freight. I decided to change to the external free camera for this coupling movement. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to release the brakes to try and touch the buffers together and then I will click to couple the locomotive to the wagons. Ooh. Bit first there. Oh, we bounced off slightly. Let's try that again with low power. Still bounced off. I'm not very good at this, I guess. It's not something I do very often, I have to say. Using very minimal throttle now. And again, and now stop. And that's looking much better. They look pretty much connected now. And if I now move the camera forward, you've got the option there, manual coupling. So I can just click on that and we're now coupled. We now need to jump back into the cab to continue this journey. Nice work. Change direction with the reverser and move the train forward into the indicated siding. It may take a couple of minutes for the brakes on the entire train to release. I don't know if it's drawing power or not there, but it didn't seem to be. Yeah, we are now. At the stopping point coming up just ahead, we actually need to stop slightly beyond it or it doesn't seem to register the stop. So I'm going to stop about two or three meters beyond the actual stopping point.
stopping a little bit early there. As he said a moment ago, the brakes take a while to release on the entire train, uh, so I didn't need to brake quite as hard as I did. But I've managed to prevent the train from stopping too early. You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Uncouple from the wagons on foot this time. So now I need to get out the locomotive. Let's open the door. Just run to jump down and go to the rear of the locomotive and now just do what we did before. So when I get the option, there we are, manual coupling, click to uncouple. And then this should conclude uh, this first lesson in the BR185. That's it for this training module. And now from here I can just click continue and you can go straight on to the next training module which in this case is the AFB introduction. Um, and I'm not sure if this is in the same train or not, that cab looks different but I'm going to click on it anyway because I wanted to do at least one more lesson. In this training module, you will be shown how to use the AFB speed control system. The train has already been set up for you. You'll need to activate AFB through the left multifunction display. So I see that we're in the ICE-3 um, cab and I think we're on the outer test track. Uh, so it's good to be able to show the um, well, the full test track that we have um, in the training center. So let's just focus on the speedometer. Use the R and F keys to increase and decrease the AFB control. Apply power to get moving. The train will accelerate until it reaches the selected speed and then maintain it. The AFB speed control system also works with the LZB safety system and will use LZB's maximum permitted speed to control how fast you are going. LZB is covered in a different training module. Here you can see what I was talking about earlier with the glare of light as you're coming out of a tunnel until your eyes adjust to the light again.
CDA and next aim is to stop at the upcoming station so I'm going to cut the power and start braking as we get towards a kilometre out. Uh, you have to remember that the distances in Train Sim World are still measured as the crow flies. I really wish that that would be changed at some point so that it measures the actual track distance rather than the as the crow flies distance. You're approaching the station. Let's begin to slow down. The train brake, rather than AFB, should be... So he was saying uh, use the train brake to slow down rather than the AFB system, uh, which unless it's a small speed change is accurate. I mean, if you're dropping 10 kilometers an hour in speed, then I tend to not mind using the train, uh, sorry, the AFB uh, to slow you down. But uh, if you're stopping at a station, I certainly wouldn't be dropping the AFB to do that. Uh, you need to do that yourself with your own control of the braking system. coming in a little bit on the quick side so I've increased the braking there and now I'm cutting back as we're gonna stop too early Overshooting the points slightly, but not by too much. Well done. You have completed the introduction on how to use the AFB speed control system. And that's another lesson completed. Um, so personally, I like the idea of the training center and it does go into some depth on, on stuff that perhaps I don't think uh, was done in uh, previous iterations of Train Sim World. Uh, there's an awful lot more uh, to look at and to learn here. Um, I'm not going to look at the training next training module on LZB. If you're interested in learning more about PZB and LZB, then please check out my German and Austrian signaling guide, which I made a couple of years ago, and really delves into the depth of um, how to use the PZB and LZB system. Um, I will also point out though that uh, now in Train Sim World 3 on the HUD, if you're driving with the HUD, um, there's actually a guide to PZB that tells you what you need to do and when, which I think is going to be very helpful for those who are less familiar with the German signalling system. Um, I think at this point I'd just like to conclude the video by saying thank you for watching this. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I just wanted to really give a, just a general introduction over, uh, to the training centre and an overview of some of the new features within Train Sim World 3. Uh, my follow-on video from this, which will be coming very shortly, will be a run on the southeastern high-speed route between St Pancras International and Ashford International with some dynamic weather, and that is actually already recorded. And I can say that we go from some pretty nice, fairly clear skies to a very heavy thunderstorm uh, by the time that we get to Ashford and I'm driving that in early evening to really show the uh, lighting system. Um, so if you did like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and for the latest channel updates you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash PTG rail and I've put the link to my Facebook page in the video description. I've also put the link to the Train Sim World website in the video description so you can learn more about Train Sim World 3 and I've also put the Steam link which is where well because I use Steam personally uh, where you can purchase just this on Steam in the video description. Um, if you'd like to sponsor or donate to this channel, then please visit my Patreon page for further information at patreon.com forward slash ptgrep. And again, the link to that is in the video description. And finally, if you're interested in my travel or wildlife photography, uh, the, then uh, please check out PTG Traveling on Instagram. Once again, thank you for watching.